So now we'll continue on with our descriptive analysis of the Major League Baseball game data. Um, what we're going to do in this uh, video, we're going to uh, focus on uh, aggregate uh, data so that we have right now in that game data, we have uh, one observation for each game. But sometimes we're going to want to take a look at more of uh, aggregated data so that uh, we can see, uh, for example, the number of wins in a season. So we'll need to aggregate by seasons. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do in this video. So again, we have the, the description of, of the script. Uh, we're going to set our working directory. Uh, we're going to also load our tidyverse library. And we're going to read our data into the game data data frame. All right, we have our 70,182 observations and 35 variables. So what we're going to do is uh, first we're going to take a look at uh, a scatter plot so that we can explore a potential relationship uh, between game attendance and the home score. So we're we can we maybe uh, think that the more people that are uh, watching a game might influence the the number of runs that the home team is going to score. So we're just going to take a look at this. This is not necessarily proving anything, but just to see if there's a trend between the two. So what to do that? We're going to do a scatter plot or a dot plot, uh, showing for each game, uh, showing the attendance and the number of runs that the home team scored. So we're going to create a, uh, a scatter plot. So we use the ggplot command, um, and we're going to execute this on the data uh, game data data frame. Our aesthetics are going to be that the x-axis is going to be the home score, and the y-axis is going to be attendance. But we're going to divide that by a thousands, just so that our numbers are uh, are are a little closer together between our score and our attendance. So that's going to represent the number of thousands of people in attendance. So we're going to provide some labels. Our uh, x-axis is going to have a home score label. Our y-axis is going to have attendance in thousands. Um, and then we're going to provide some limits for the x-axis and y-axis. So our x limitation is going to be between 1 and 30. And the y limitation is going to be between 1 and 60. So that in, we're not going to show any attendance that's over uh, 70, 000, or over 60,000 people. And we're not going to show any uh, observations where the runs are over 30, which was not going to be a problem anyway. All right, so the uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to provide a title of home score and attendance. And we're going to um, take that um, the plot title we're going to center that. So we do an H, ju a, a H just is equal to 0.5, which is going to center that, that title. And we're going to um, put that title in boldface. And rather than dots, we're going to use black diamonds. So what we can do is we can say that we want to use that for the geom point. We're going to use the shape is equal to 18. And then we're also going to put some type of line. Now this is, again, this is not a true correlation, but just show us a line just to, so we can quickly see is there a potential uh, relationship between um, the home score and the game attendance? So it's going to draw a line of where this relationship line would look like. OK, so let's go ahead and execute that. And there's a lot of data, so it's going to take a little bit to, um, to execute. And also, because this is not you know, decimal places, these are new, uh, whole numbers. And it's really only whole numbers between 0 and 20, uh, 27. There's not going to be uh, a lot of uh, individual x values. So that's why our data looks a little bit different. I'm going to zoom in on that. Uh, so we really have uh, where the home score team scored 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, and then so forth, right? So that's why we have these kind of lines of data. Um, and then we can show, show for each time the, um, the team, home ski team scored 1, here's what the attendance looked like. And so R then put that line in place, and we can see that there is a slight positive correlation between the home score and the attendance. So the um, the more people are that were in attendance would indicate a higher, a slightly higher score. Again, we're not showing any linear relationship here. We're just plotting the two and seeing if uh, visually seeing if there's a relationship between the two. Now, this is not ideal data to to 
show for a, um, a scatter plot, um, but you can see kind of what the deficiencies are on this type of data for a scatter plot. It doesn't look like what we'd expect it to look like just because we don't have enough unique x values. But we can see that there is a potential relationship between the two. All right, so now let's move on to aggregating data. So what we want to do is we want to explore our game attendance patterns uh, over the years. We're going to create a bar chart showing the average attendance um, for each game in, in a season. So from 2010 to 2019, we're going to calculate the average attendance and uh, show that on a bar chart. So um, I'm going to create two variables. One is begin and one is end. So our begin date is going to be equal to two 2010. So we're going to assign the begin value as 2010. We're going to assign a 2019 to the end date. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new data frame called chart data. And that chart data is going to be uh, a data frame that contains aggregated data. So we're going to use the aggregate function. And we're, our formula is going to be, uh, we're going to be associating the, the looking at, at attendance for each season. So this is the, um, the formula that we use. The formula is equal to attendance by season. Okay. Now the function that we're going to do is we're going to, not going to add up the number of people attending each season, but rather looking at the average attendance for each game over the season and come up with them that mean. Um, so, but what we want to do is we want to only include that, that calculation on a subset of our data. So we're saying our subset is going to be equal to uh, where the season, um, again, we have our season data, which is the second column in there, so that's the, the season, where that season is somewhere, it's going to be greater than or equal to our begin date, um, and it's going to be less than or equal to our end date. So that's how we're going to get the, the begin date and end date to, to define which data we're going to aggregate. And we're going to be using doing this aggregation on the game data data frame. So when we control enter, we should see a new data frame uh, that's created. Uh, but what we forgot to do is we didn't execute all of our, our commands. We forgot to do the begin and the end. So um, I need to go ahead and create the begin variable. There we go, begin is equal to 2010. Let's do our end variable, and that end is equal to 2019. Now let's go ahead and aggregate our data. And now we have a new data frame with 10 observations, which is not surprising. We have 10 seasons that we're calculating, and two variables, probably the season and the attendance. There we go, season and attendance. But so this was a, an average or a mean that was calculated, and there's, therefore there are decimal places. But we know we can't have a point you know, a decimal of a fraction of a person. So that really doesn't make sense. So let's do some rounding. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our decimal places. We're going to round so that we have zero decimal places. So we're going to round the attendance um, variable in our chart data data frame. We're going to round that value and uh, to zero decimal places. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that. And now when we open up our data frame there, we can see everything's rounded uh, appropriately to a, a whole number. All right, so now with our data frame in place, we've aggregated data where we have the average number of attendance for each season. We're going to do a, a plot of that. We are going to do a, um, a bar plot. So we're going to do a bar plot, and the aesthetics for this is going to be the um, it's the x value is going to be the or the x axis is going to be the season, and the y uh, axis is going to be the average attendance. Um, and we're going to be doing a bar plot, and, and we're going to be doing uh, we use this set the stat as equal to identify. So we're simply just um, dem we're just simply displaying our data, and we're going to set that bar plot. Uh, we're going to use steel blue as our as our color, um, but we also want to format so that for uh, we need to identify where the different breaks or where the different bars that we're using are, and that's going to be um, a, a continuous sequence uh, that's going to begin at the begin date and then end at the end date, so that we would get one bar for each value uh, in between. So we should have ten bars, and then our y variable we're going to um, 
we want to format that to include commas. It's a lot easier to read that if, if we have commas in, in, our, in, our variable, in our values. All right, so now the text on, on the plot is going to, uh, we're going to use uh, attendance as a label. But what we want to do is on that, we also want to include a comma in, in, our, in our results. Um, what, so what we're actually doing in this line here is we want to, for each bar, we want to show the actual value in that. And that what we're doing here is we're going to say we want to show the attendance with a comma. Um, and we want to also adjust this uh, so that it's inside the bar. So we make that adjustment. And you can, you can play around with that value to, to see where that then displays the, your, your result. And we're setting the font size to 3.5. I'm going to provide a title for this, um, for this bar plot. Uh, identifying the label for the x-axis and the y-axis and then again we're going to um, we're going to have the uh, the title centered and bold so let's go ahead and execute this and see what this looks like and I'll zoom in on this and so that we can see that our x or y-axis does have the commas as well as each bar has a a comma in there and we can see that it's from 2010 to 2019 and looking at this we can see that there is a slight trend and lately there's a trend downwards sadly that, that there's a trend downwards uh, so we can we can take a look at this to see average attendance by season um, now again this shows for all of major league baseball so it would be interesting to take a look by team so we could do that maybe through a separate analysis but this is what our bar plot looks like, and this is a bar plot on aggregated data, not our not our raw data, but we had to do some aggregate data to be able to calculate first the attendance, average attendance by each of the seasons, and then we could plot that data. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to look at the attendance of winning teams. Uh, we're going to create a horizontal label bar chart of the average attendance for the 10 most winning teams. So what we did this past time was we did a vertical bar chart. So what we're going to do next, we're going to flip that around and so the bars are going from left to right. But rather than looking at all teams, we only want to include uh, the 10 most winning teams to look at their um, average attendance. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, just like what we did in the last script is we're going to create a new field called winning team and we're going to take a look at the winner. If it's the home is the team one, we're going to identify that the winning team was the home team. Otherwise, it's going to be the visiting team. So we're going to go ahead and create that field again. So this is exactly what we did last time. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, we're going to repopulate. So we're going to reuse that chart data data frame. We're going to repopulate that with a new aggregate. We're going to um, look at the uh, count th the winners uh, by the winning team and we're going to rather than uh, calculate an average we're just going to count the numbers so our function is equal to length and we're going to do this aggregation based on our data our game data data frame so let's go ahead and execute that all right so we populated our chart data with new data doesn't look like it but when we look at this we see our winning team and we're counting the number of instances that they were identified as the winning team so this would be the number of wins over that time period and over that time period is all of our data from so from 1990 to 2019 how many wins did each team have and that's what we see here all right so next, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, filter that data. So right now we have all 33 teams, but let's say we are really only looking at the top teams. So we're going to take that chart data data frame. We're going to order it by decreasing winner. So the number of the, uh, we want to show that only the top 10 in this case, so one through 10 teams in that chart data. So when we execute this, we should see only 10 observations. Control enter, and there we go, our chart data of our 10 observations. So this shows the 10 most winning teams. So it, what it did is it took the winning winner value and took only the 10, the top 10, and we can see that's all we have is 10 entries. All right, so we have the top 10 winners. Now let's go ahead and plot that so we think we can compare them against each other. Um, we're going to do another bar plot. Going to do it in steel blue. Uh, still want our commas for the number of wins. 
uh, we want to, this time we're using a horizontal adjustment so that we can show the number of winds within the, we're going to move it over, uh, set that value equal to 1, so we can move it over slightly. We're going to put that, the, the label is uh, 3.5 font. We're going to provide a title for the bar chart. The x-axis is going to be the team, and the y-axis is going to be the number of winds. And we're going to put the title at the top uh, and center it and bold face it. Now what we have to do here is we want to do a coordinate flip. So rather than a vertical bar chart like what we see over here, we're going to flip that so that it's a horizontal bar chart. So when we control enter, there we go, I'm going to zoom in on this. And so we this is our horizontal bar chart and we do include the value for each of the winning teams. So this shows the wins for the top 10 teams from 2010 to 2019. Um, and we can see that the new, during that time, the New York uh, Yankees had 2,738 wins and the Braves had 2,660 wins. So we can show the, the number of wins over that time period. So um, now what we want to do is we're going to uh, take a look at the top teams again and of that we just calculated, um, what we're going to do is we're going to grab those teams and now we're going to do a new aggregate function where we can take a look at those teams and uh, take a look at their attendance. Maybe suggesting that uh, the better the team and the more wins the team has, the better attendance they're going to have. So we're going to create a new data frame, top teams, and we're going to grab all the winning teams from our, da our chart data. So. We're going to capture these winning teams here, and we're going to put that into a new variable called top teams. Control enter. And we can see that variable is created, top teams, and that there's 10 values. And those would be the teams right there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, go back to our original data, our, um, uh, our game data, and we're going to create a new aggregation. We're going to repopulate the chart data data frame. We're going to uh, based that that new data based on an aggregate function, we're going to calculate uh, calculate the mean where we are looking at the attendance. We're going to take a look at the um, average attendance for each of these winning teams, and it's going to be based off of the the game data. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and execute that, and take a look now at our chart data. We have all 33 teams again. So for each of these teams we're going to, so these are all 33 teams, not necessarily the, um, the top 10 yet. This is their average attendance. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to do some filter uh, so that we want to include only those top 10 teams. So we have our top 10 teams here in this top teams variable. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to take, take a subset of our chart data. Uh, so we're going to take look at only those um, data elements in this data frame. We have all 33 teams or all three, 33 entries here, we're, but we want to include only those that were part of our top 10 teams. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a subset command take from our chart data. Uh, we're going to say, but only include those now where the winning team is in this top 10 teams variable. Okay, so when we execute that, we should see this chart data go down to 10, and that 10 will be only these teams. Control Enter. There we go, chart team, uh, chart data went down to 10, and those would be only our top 10 teams. And this is their attendance. So now we have the attendance for the top, um, the teams with the most wins during this time period. So now let's plot this out. Uh, we're going to do another horizontal bar plot. Uh, showing the attendance for each of these top, uh, top 10 teams. Control Enter and zoom in in here. And so here's what we can see is uh, the attendance uh, during this time period for each of the, the top 10 teams that were based off of our previous calculation or with the teams with the most wins. We can see that there's still a differential there as well. And the Yankees, which had the most wins, aren't the team uh, with the, the most attendance. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to look at the winning differential of the most winning teams. So how much did the, the of, of our top 10 teams, uh, we're going to take a look at 
um, the differential for how much they won by, all right? So we're going to explore the winning differential of the most winning teams by creating a horizontal label bar chart of the average point differential for the team uh, for the most the top 10 winning teams. So again, this is going to be another aggregate function. So we're going to reuse our chart data data frame. We're going to do an aggregate uh, calculation, uh, taking uh, looking at the um, the winning teams by by again the top 10 teams. Um, we're going to count the numbers, and this is going to be based on the data, uh, the game data. So run it again, and we get all 30 teams because we haven't filtered these out yet. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to order this to take a look at our top 10 teams. Now we're back down to 10, and here's the 10 teams and the number of wins that they have. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to recapture the top 10 teams. And we have our team top 10 teams updated. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average uh, Diff score differential, and that is score diff for each of these top, top 10 teams. So for all the te teams that are in there, we're going to, actually we're going to recalculate this for all, all teams. So we're going to um, do an aggregate function again. We're going to calculate the mean this time. So we're going to take a look at the mean score differential for each of, uh, for each of the teams. So during that time period, how much did they win by? We're going to average that out, um, and that's going to be based off our, our game data. So we're going to our game data for all, all the records, and we're going to calculate the average point differential um, for each team. Control Enter. And so now what we're going to do is we have, have our new chart data, and we're, seeing, we're looking at the, the average score differential. So this first team um, lost more than they won, and but they this average point differential is 0 0.02, which is basically zero. Uh, so that that they lost more than they won, but they didn't lose by much. Um, so we're going to round that off because we don't want decimal places. We're going uh, we don't want too many decimal places, but we have to accept that there are going to be decimal places because this is an average. Otherwise, we're going to have just a lot of zeros in there. So we're going to uh, average. Uh, take that decimal places out to four places. So if we look at that, now we have four places. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to remove some of these teams because we only want to look at the top 10 teams again. So we're taking our chart data. We're going to uh, look at only those records that are part of the top teams. And now we're back down to 10. And now of those 10 teams, let's plot this again, where we're going to look at the score differential on uh, a horizontal bar plot. So I'm going to zoom in on that. And we can see these are the 10 most winning teams. Um, but if we look at the score differential, some of them are very positive. They're winning by a lot. Uh, but some of them um, actually lost more. Uh, that well, actually, So that we know that they're the winning teams. But when they lose, it looks like they're losing bigger. So these two teams, um, when they lose, they're losing bigger than when they win. Uh, so this is the score differential, the average score differential for the top teams uh, during this time period. And this is, again, a horizontal bar, bar plot. So with this data, you know, we, we don't have a lot of narrative around what, why we're doing these things. I really am doing this script more to show you different things that you can do. Um, but there's a lot of power in, in your analysis if you work with aggregated data. So in this script, we did a lot of data aggreg uh, uh, aggregation and then showed the results in, in our bar plots. So that's really what I wanted you get, to get out of this. Take a look at this, pause it to see um, how I did the different aggregations. You're going to need to know how to do that um, in order to be able to complete your assignment.